In this video, I wanted to show just a couple more quick tips that can help you round out the data set for this multifamily building. So here we have our, our data set. If I turn off the section box, uh, you'll be able to see that it's a, it's a roughly complete um, example of a building. Looks like there's an overlapping wall there. Um, it's by no means a, a beautiful building design. It was designed for the purposes of this workshop uh, specifically, or this learning series specifically. Um, but it does have a, a lot of elements that were assembled very quickly using this Rhino to Revit method with conveyor. And I added in a few more pieces of detail that I think will help showcase a few things that I've always had difficulty drawing quickly in Revit, um, but can be done very quickly in Rhino. So particularly these these letters, um, especially if you're after a specific font uh, or, or anything that has a bit more of complex curvature, those can be quite difficult to draw in Revit. But here you can see that we've just created some text in Rhino. Um, that's just, you know, simply using the text command and you can adjust, you know, the fonts from any of your system fonts on your computer, etc., cetera, um, and place those in the 3D space. So within Conveyor, these are set up as component families and as specialty equipment. Um, you can send these across as families. It'll create a separate family for each individual object, or you can use direct shapes. I'm going to choose to use direct shapes for this example. And as I've shown in many of the other um, examples, it's as simple again as clicking send to Revit, and then these will cross over into the Revit space. Um, compared to, you know, maybe having to trace a graphic and extrude it over in Revit that could take considerably more time. So we can see here each of these letters are coming in. Another type of element that I've had some difficulty drawing quickly in Revit are these type of trellises. Um, in the past, I've drawn these as a, a series of adaptive components on a surface of a mass and then hiding the mass. And it can just be a little, maybe let's say overcomplicated for, for an early concept design um, feature that you want to show. And it's something that you can do very quickly and easily on the Rhino side. Uh, so I'm going to select these by layer. These have been set up as structural framing. And um, again, as I've shown in previous examples, you can just select these and um, send them over to Revit, again, as direct shapes. For these in particular, if you were to send them over as uh, families, it would create individual families for each one of these trellis elements. I think there's over 80 trellis elements, um, and that's not necessary. So here we can, uh, once again, just send to Revit, and these will start to populate across. Great, so those were both um, pretty straightforward as examples. Um, one more thing I wanted to show is that you can also utilize Grasshopper to place elements potentially, um, especially when we think about landscaping, there's often uh, maybe you have one particular uh, tree family and that is representative of um, the type of tree that you'll be placing. Um, but because it's only one 3D element, you have to rotate it or maybe scale it or or perform other translations on it to get it to look a little bit more realistic in a, a rendering or in your drawing set. Um, so I built just a very simple, and I'll open it here, Grasshopper script to show how something like this could be done. Um, I'm sure there's many different ways that this could be done, but I'll, I'll just walk you through the steps of... Um, what we have going on here so that you can see an example in action. But essentially, um, each one of these lengths, these are actually the uh, individual 
planting beds um, along the sidewalk edge here that have been brought over from Revit using conveyor. And uh, there's a, a curve that's been drawn just along the center of each one of these beds um, and a block, a tree block that's loaded into the rhino file. Um, not a particularly realistic tree block. Uh, please don't judge my quickly drawn tree block. Um, but this is uh, just a tree block that would ordinarily be consistent as you're moving across. So in this, in this um, node of grasshopper, it's, it's placing the tree in the same um, orientation and at the same scale for each one. And um, as we move along in the script, we start to see, well, what happens if we rotate each one by a random angle on the XY plane um, at its base. And then maybe one step further, what happens if we scale each one at a random factor um, between a, a set range? So by doing something like this, um, it maybe it depends on um, your aesthetic preferences, but it, it's just a way that we can show that each one of these is going to come across into Revit as the same family, consistent family, but just with different translations applied to it. Uh, so from here, you could either use the grasshopper tools that we have in the Proven Ground menu to write these over to conveyor and then send them to Revit that way, or you can bake them out. Um, I'll bake them onto this site layer since we have nothing else on the site layer. In this way, by baking it directly onto a conveyor layer, it will already have all of those conveyor properties associated with it. Um, so these are now baked out. We're all done with Grasshopper. And we can select these objects. And once again, um, come over into our conveyor menu. And this time we'll use families. So it uh, just makes one family for each of these blocks, um, block and not block instances. All of these blocks will share the same family and send those to Revit. Conveyor will have this pop-up window asking you if you want to load those block definitions. And each of those is importing now into Revit. So you could apply the same logic of having multiple different transformations happening to different types of blocks and then importing those into a lot of different use cases. Um, this is just one demonstration of, of something that might be useful for an everyday activity. The files for all of these examples that we've covered in the learning series um, should be uploaded on our website, uh, probably at the location where you found the learning series. If you are on YouTube, there should be a link there that redirects you to our site where you can download all of these materials. If uh, there's anything that you see here that you have questions on, feel free to reach out to us at any time, or if there's something that I've forgotten in the data set, that is possible, human error is possible. Um, so please go ahead and reach out and we'll get that sent over to you and uploaded. And thank you for watching each of these. Hopefully you find this very useful uh, in your day-to-day. -day. And as always, if you run into anything that you think could be an improvement on Conveyor, absolutely reach out and let me know. Thank you.